If you know of a dog that consumes everything in its path, our pet trainer 911 is here to help. And a hotel where pampered pet service is just a phone call away. Plus, what do you think this wolf and dog have in common? Could they be fifth cousins twice removed? Find out next on Animal Attractions. Who would you cuddle up next to on a cold night? Sometimes just one pet doesn't do the trick. Now you probably heard of the term three dog night. It came from the Eskimos who felt that the only way to keep warm was to lay down with their dogs. Sometimes it got so cold that it took three dogs to keep from freezing. Hi, I'm Krishanda Lee and welcome to Animal Attractions TV. This show dedicated to the deep affection that people have for their pets. Now, is tonight a three dog or three pet night for you? Or is spending quality time with your animal out of the question? Such was the case for Hannah and her out of control rescue dog, Fenway. He chewed up everything. Time to call Coach Ronald White, our pet trainer, 911. Hannah was at the end of her rope with Fenway. His compulsive chewing was costing her way too much. So, she called Coach Ronald White to help. Hi, how are you doing? Are I'm you Hannah. Doing? Nice to meet you. Well, I'm very glad you're here today. Oh, thank you. So, you have your list? Yes, I do. I have it right here. One of the main problems with Fenway is his chewing of objects. He likes to chew cable cords, DVDs, and you can see all his DVDs and the books all right there. Yeah, and this is his. I grew up with the same dog for 20 years and then I moved to Florida after graduating college up north and I was living in a house by myself and it was kind of lonely, I wasn't used to that so I wanted a dog there to keep me company. I was attracted to Fenway right away by his personality, his coloring and just his excitement. Well when I got Fenway home he was really energetic, trying to get used to the place, scoping out, seeing what the situation was. And that was all fine, but then when I would leave to go to a job or go out for a little bit, he would get really nervous that I wasn't coming back because in the past he'd been abandoned or given back. I'm not really sure of the whole story, but he would get so nervous that he'd start destroying stuff as kind of punishment that I was leaving him. He would destroy books, computers, like the cords. DVDs, he's chewed up a number of my DVDs. Basically anything he can get his hand on. Hannah, she called me up and told me uh, about her dog. Uh, chews up stuff around the house. Mainly paper items and plastic, hard plastic things. Uh, he would chew stuff and she wouldn't get on him. She wouldn't let him know. She would like just take it away from him and hope that he don't do it again and stick the muzzle on him. Dog don't know no better. He's gonna be a dog. After living by myself with Fenway for a couple months, he and then getting a roommate, my roommate was very upset about Fenway's chewing because it had been about two or three computer cords and that's her business and her job so that kind of prevents her from working some days until I can go and spend a lot of money getting her another cord. Um, it was kind of after about the third computer cord that he chewed through, and that was a couple hundred dollars. We decided it was about time to put money towards getting him trained. So I signed him up for Coach Ronald White's boot camp. I heard about Coach Ronald White through a mutual friend whose dog was a complete menace, but then after going to Coach White, he was completely trained and one of the best behaved dogs I'd seen, so. Well, don't worry about your dog. Okay. And uh, we're going to train him, and you won't need that muzzle on him anymore. Good. Bye, Fenway. Be a good boy, and I'll see you in 30 days. When we take the dog home, we uh, still keep the muzzle on him for a few days. Then we take it off of him, no, uh, mess around with him, let him get to know me. 
by feeding him, petting on him, loving on him, making everything just normal. You want this? Huh? You want that? What do you want? Up the ninth to tenth day after we got to know him, then we just took him through his training. Please? Please? I'm going to take him through his obedience by making him walk on my side, and then I'll be giving him commands, but I won't be saying his name, and I won't be patting and loving on him. And he'd go through his heel, stop, sit, down, stay, and he'll hear every day. Once he has the structure, then he's learning to stop chewing stuff around the house. Stop, sit. Well, we got uh, his toys, and we got the stuff that he tore up, and they know the difference. So the stuff that he tore up, I'll give it to him and see which one he takes. And then if he takes the toy, I'll, I'll pet love on him and praise him. Good boy. That's a good boy. But if he takes that uh, war or a book or something, I'll take it and I'll tell him. Leave it. Leave it. And I'll tell him that's a bad dog. He knows the difference. Like wait about an hour or two to set it all back down, do something else, set it in another room, and uh, take him through it. I won't feed your dog in the morning time. He'll work right out of my pocket. I got treats right here. So you may work your dog after he got done eating, but I'm going to work him hungry. The hungrier your dog is, the smarter he is. That's a good boy. Leave it. Leave it. We give that dog no choice but to learn his commands. Please. He wants to be a leader, so he's going to be out front pulling me and I just gradually show him his place with me. Stop. I'm not going for this wild Heel. walk. Heel. I work with the dog for 30 days, and then I'll go work with Hannah, Stop. and I'll train her with the dog. When Coach White first brought Fenway home, I was ecstatic. I hadn't seen him in 30 days. I just ran out there, and after we calmed down from the excitement of seeing each other, I really saw a change in Fenway. He was. His temperament, he was more calm. It was just, it was like I was seeing someone else's dog, but it was mine. It was great. Okay. And then show him where his timeout's at. Timeout. 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 Oh, she, for the first day, uh, you know, it was kind of awkward because it's all new to her, showing her how to hold her hands down, what to say to the dog. Be a little bit more firmer with him. Come here. Heel. But the second day, she caught on to it. And she was doing real good. Okay, and this stuff like this right here, you can use this to, because he's been trained to leave it. Okay. So what we can do is give them to him. I'm so just telling. Leave it. Wow, I've never seen him do that before. And then you can give him one of his chew toys. Good boy. She knew just what I was talking about. And she would put the doll through his paces. Leave it. And then once I see her put the dog through her paces, I know that the dog is trained and she is too. Hi, Fenway, come here. Dad's oh, my good boy. You gave me a list. Yep. And I'm going to give you a list the way he's trained. Okay. And you just uh, call me if you got any problem with your dog. Okay. I'm always your dog trainer. Yep. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good one. I could see a huge change in Fenway. He was listening, he was behaving, he wasn't as hyperactive, but he still had the energy and he, the excitement, but a behaved excitement. Now I don't have to take Fenway out in a muzzle, which is one of my greatest concerns. I can take him around people, kids, other pets. He goes down to the beach, all, almost every day we go down there and I don't have to worry about him going off and misbehaving because he stays right next to me and behaves. Before Coach White's training, me and Fenway's relationship was a little rocky, but now it's exactly what I was looking for. He's the best dog, the best companion that I could possibly hope for. Traveling with pets has been on the rise for many years, and today it's estimated that over 65% of Americans have their furry little friends accompany them on vacation from coast to coast. Today, Harley and I are here at the Royal Pacific Resort in Universal Orlando, which is one of the many pet-friendly hotels across the country. Now, I gotta be honest, not all pet-friendly hotels are created equal. Here, it's definitely first class all the way, but it's becoming much more common for hotels to offer pet amenities, specialized bedding, and guest services to make sure pets and their owners feel right at home. Let's go check it out. 
Come on. How you doing? Hi, Alex Boylan. Checking in? Yes. Now, it's best to check ahead with your destination, but it's becoming much more popular not to even need advanced reservations. It's also a good idea to check and see how many pets you're allowed to bring, as well as, is there a limit to how much your pet can weigh? And finally, ask about a pet fee. It can range anywhere from 200 all the way down to a small nominal fee. I think here it's like 25 bucks. There you go, Mr. Boylan, there's your key packet. Have a wonderful stay at the hotel. Have Thank you. Day. All right. Come on, buddy. Hey, look at this, Harley. I mean, could you imagine needing anything else? Look at this Harley. He's got frisbee, he's got some toys, little treats. His own bed's already set up there for him. There's a water bowl there for you, Harley. And take a look at this. A personalized note from the pet GM welcoming you here, huh? Well, Harley and I have been traveling, and I think he needs a little walk to stretch those legs. And it says right here that there's a park for, the, for you and some hiking trail. So I think it's time to get some exercise. What do you think, Harley, huh? All right. Let's go. Come on, honey, come on. Like you, your dog does not want to spend his entire vacation in the hotel room. So if they have a dog-friendly park on the premises, make sure to include your pet so it can mingle with the other four-legged guests. What do you say? Lunchtime, Harley? All right, buddy. Let's go. Now, one thing I suggest before you choose your pet-friendly hotel is to check out the room service menu, you know. Try to find one that has good nutrition, that helps deal with, you know, a dog's travel stress and altitude adjustments, stuff like that. Another thing is make sure it's been approved and developed by a licensed veterinarian. So, hey, Harley, what are you in the mood for? Come here, come here. You got the Bow Wow Burger, a little Chow Hound Tenderloin. What do you think? I think we'll take the Bow Wow Tenderloin. That's cool. Aloha, star service. Hello, you're oh, welcome. Wow. <laughs> I think this might be the nicest meal he's ever eaten. So as you can see, traveling with your pets has never been easier thanks to chains like the Lowe's Hotels. From check-in to check-out, everything to the very last detail has been taken care of to make sure you and your pet have the most comfortable stay. Well, that's certainly a cute kitten. But wait, there's a piece missing. It must be a Manx. Actually, not all Manx cats are born tail-free. Some have little stubs, others have longer tails which are often bobbed. Either way, as a breed, they have no shortage of personality. That's what attracts breeder Janet Milligan to them. The Manx are known as the clowns of the cat fancy. They make excellent pets. They have super, super personalities. They're very loving and affectionate, extremely smart. Um, they make good pets for anybody, elderly people. They love other animals, dogs, rabbits. They get along well with everything. The Manx gets its name from its original home the Isle of Man, situated between Britain and Ireland, and are thought to be a mutation of the domestic cats of that island. However, legend has it that Noah is to blame for slamming the ark door on the cat's tail. But they are handsome animals. Manx should have a nice uh, round face. The, the ears should look like a rocker. They should have a little bit of a break and a short little muzzle, nice little jolly appearance. They should have a short, compact body. Um, higher back legs, give them a little hopping gait. Their coat, if they're short hair, should have a, a very uh, plushy undercoat. If they're long hair, they should have a long silky coat. Most of their eyes are blue when they're born, but there is an exception of white cats that do have blue eyes. Manx cats also make very good apartment companions for elderly people or people that, are, that don't get out too much. They're perfectly content to stay indoors if they've never been outdoors, or a lot of them will go indoors and outdoors. They adapt very well to any environment. Manx is also a keen hunter. This little cat, there was a nest of rats in the tack room. And she was in there, she came out, she had two baby mice in her mouth. She had a tail hanging out of each side of her mouth. And she went back and caught four more. The shorter tail means a shorter spinal cord. So unless you get your Manx from a reputable breeder, there could be problems with undeveloped nerves. 
They also can be prone to colitis or irritated intestine. So, it's important to find a reliable breeder. Makes can even have a characteristic bunny hop, oftentimes seen when they're running. This may be due to the fact that the spinal cord is a little bit shortened at the end, or it may be due to the fact that their legs in the back are a little bit longer than the legs in the front. Sometimes you're better off with something of a tail versus no tail at all. That way you'll be sure that there's no nerve deficits in the back end area here. Once you find a healthy mix, you'll have endless entertainment with a cat that loves to play till it drops. Is there a puppy or a dog in your family who craves doggy treats? The bad news is overindulging your dog with treats can lead to serious health problems and a shorter lifespan. Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Temple. And the good news is we can feed treats to our pets when we feed them the right treats in the right amounts. Think about something as innocent as this cookie. One of these cookies would be like you or I eating two of these cheeseburgers for every cookie. Additionally, this one ounce of cheddar cheese fed to your dog would be like one and a half of these hamburgers or one and a half of these chocolate bars. And this hot dog is equivalent to you eating two of these hamburgers or two of these chocolate bars. So you understand what you think of as a small treat for your dog can be way too many calories. So what can you do to reward them for their good behavior without blowing their healthy diet? It starts with the appropriate food for your dog's size and lifestyle. Puppies need a food designed for their growing years. Their bodies require a puppy food with increased amounts of energy, protein, and calcium compared to adult dogs' needs. And your large breed puppy needs a puppy food formulated to ensure proper bone and muscle growth and the right amount of energy. When your puppy reaches adulthood, at about a year of age, it's time to think about a food change. Additionally, that little puppy that gets all the exercise he needs, when he gets to be an adult, you're going to have to help provide that exercise for him. Find something you both enjoy doing together and pick a food that's appropriate for their age and their size. Ingredients should help your dog maintain healthy teeth, skin, and coat. Did you know that by age seven, the average dog is considered a mature adult and that the large breed dogs like the Great Dane could be considered old by age five? But not to worry. There are senior dog foods formulated to help them stay healthy and to deal with the problems aging can bring. And then what are you going to do when he comes and he looks at you with those big brown eyes and he wants something from the table? You know table scraps aren't healthy. So why don't we look at some healthy alternatives like these. Consider these carrots or green beans or sliced apple or a healthy dog snack. Remember, check the package so you know how much of these you can feed on a daily basis. And there's lots of other ways you can show your pet that you care about him that don't require food. Play ball, take him for a walk, play games. Remember, it's all about showing them how much you love them and taking good care of them. Imagine what it would be like to meet and interact with a prehistoric dog. To observe how they were hardwired to think and behave so we could understand our own dogs better. In essence, we can do that by meeting their direct ancestor that still walks the earth, the wolf. This is the Big Oaks Wolf Sanctuary known as Bows. Here they take in wounded, injured, and abused wolves for rehabilitation. Some of the wolves that landed here are the results of failed attempts by people to make them pets. So that begs the question, how closely related are wolves to dogs? Dr. Jennifer Spencer from the vet clinic that keeps these wolves healthy is the expert with the answers. You know, I've heard that there's some debate as to whether dogs and wolves are actually really genetically related. So what's the real story? Well, taxonomists who study genetics, they believe that the dog is the direct descendant of uh, wolves. 
you can tell they're closely related. Uh, they pack, they bond, they play, and they can even uh, interbreed together. That makes a lot of sense. Just by looking at them, you can see that, right? Right. So I have dogs at home. So after meeting the wolves today, is there anything that we dog owners can take home with us? Oh, yes, definitely. I'm sure what you'll observe when you visit is that in the wolf pack, there's an alpha leader. Right. And uh, the alpha provides stability and provides for the pack. And you yourself in your home, you are the alpha. So whenever you leave, it, it upsets them and it kind of disrupts everything. Yeah, it makes them feel unstable. And if there's no one providing for him anymore, he feels really anxious. And so they strike out the only way they know by uh, destroying sofas and, and furniture. That's really interesting. It seems like it's actually connected to a survival issue. Is that right? Right. <laughs> this wolf rescue is run by John Knight and his wife, Deb. They purchased this property with the intention of building this wolf sanctuary. And now I'm ready to reintroduce myself to the pack. Oh, they're beautiful. Look at that. John house. reminded me that there's some very important rules yes, when house. visiting wolves. It's okay to look into their eyes, but don't maintain yes. eye contact for too long because this may be read as a sign of aggression or challenge. So they, um, they like to sit up high on the platform, oh, is that right? Yeah. Acknowledge everyone who comes over to say hello. Can we inspire? And if someone growls, they're probably Ooh, saying that, that I've entered their personal space go. long enough and I should move Thank away you. a little such a beautiful and then avoid girl. all eye contact to touch a until wolf. they tell me it's okay again. As long as I listen to what they're telling me, I'll be fine. I know that wolves are genetically similar, related to dogs, right. but this experience is so different from being in a pack of dogs. It's Night and day. 100-pound wolf, 120-pound wolf is so much more powerful than a, the uh, dog, same size. Well, who's the most powerful wolf here on the property? Spirit, the white one. Right there. She's, uh, she's the most powerful. Uh, she's, she's not the most dominant because she's an omega female, but she is the most powerful. Pound so the pound. most powerful does not have to be the alpha. No, the alpha status is actually something that's within. That's so interesting. It's less to do with the physical character. And, and you more to do with the uh, mental and emotional and just who they are. Wolves' brains are 30% larger than those of dogs. Uh, they're, they're extremely smart, extremely intelligent. They, uh, they're always doing the math. They're always doing the calculations. Uh, they, uh, they always know where they stand with you. A socialized wolf, in my opinion, is, is incredibly affectionate. And uh, they like to be kissed. They like to be touched. Uh, they like to be acknowledged. They like to be adored. Do they respond to commands? Uh, actually, no, not not very well. Anyway, a wolf. Uh, wolves do not make good pets. They're carnivores, and uh, they, they don't socialize like a normal household pet or domesticate. They. Uh, that's why you have to have a sanctuary like this. A lot of people get them, and they and they think they're going to have this wolf in, in their house that they, they feed dog food and, and make sit and you know ask to go outside and go to the bathroom. But that's that's not the case. You really have to let them be who they are, do what they're going to do, and accommodate them. Another Spirit, reason here, wolves make good pets <laughs> is that they are so strong, yeah, dude, even their playing can become dangerous. Spirit, come on, sweetie. Spirit. Spirit. <laughs> come here. Whoa. Spirit, come here, darling. Oh, she's gonna, did I give her my foot? <laughs> So now you're going to show her who the alpha is. Okay, Spirit. You're going to tell this her, Spirit, you're not supposed to eat the guests or their clothes. Aww. This is what we were talking about. So what are you doing? Explain to us what you're doing. Well, she's, she gets a little, a little too big for her britches, and you pick <laughs> her up, and it sort of sets her in her place and a little bit. And I pet her now? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, she's, no, she's not, not mad at all. Okay. She's, uh, she just likes her toys. Yeah. Ah. Thank you, Kitty. Thank you. Well, she's beautiful. That's a real she wolf is. encounter there. Oh, yes, it is. I almost did get struggle away, didn't I? It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. She's a sweetheart. Come on. It's okay. Although Spirit's playfulness did get intense, I never Samson's felt she was trying sister. to hurt me. I didn't realize that. Did you see their den? I did. Look well. at that. Yeah, it goes uh, goes about six feet in this way, turns to the right, and goes another four or five feet. So a couple of adults can fit in there easily, right? Pretty much. Wow. In fact, Jordan, who weighs about 100, 120 pounds, he can go down in there and uh, one way, and turn around in the back, and then come back out front ways. That's 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 amazing. There's a lot of engineering that goes into that. I yeah, guess. wolves breed once a year, and uh, he thinks he's having a litter this year, so oh. he's getting ready to to uh, mate and. Uh, 
and have puppies. So but he's preparing his house. Exactly. Oh, and that all that reminds me of the uh, research I've done about um, dens, wolves' dens, that they won't soil or mess up their den. Right. And that's why crate training works with dogs because okay. they keep their trait their crates clean. That's interesting. Yes, wow. it is, and that's another behavior they got from the wolves. Obviously, family life is not new to the wolf. They live together, play together, eat together. Our domestic dogs have inherited this ancient feeling of belonging to a pack or family. And their devotion to family is perhaps the most rewarding quality our pets have received from their wild ancestors. It's hard to think of our cuddly, loving pets as wild animals or surviving on the streets like millions of other homeless dogs and cats. Fortunately, there are many things that we can do to make a difference, like spaying and neutering our pets. Then, there's training our pets. Beginning early is key to prevent bad behaviors from starting, including getting professional help at the first signs of trouble. It's a fact, well-behaved pets are rarely surrendered to shelters. Finally, consider adopting a pet. There are literally thousands of shelters and pet adoption facilities all over the country, like a Second Chance for Love shelter. They specialize in helping people and pets find the perfect match. You can find more information about Second Chance for Love adoptions and more expert tips on our website, AnimalAttractionsTV.com. I'm Krishanda Lee, and for all of us here at Animal Attractions TV, can't wait to see you next time.